Hey everybody. I'm in the middle of doing a big water change here on my 125 gallon native tank and it got me thinking about tank filtration and the nitrogen cycle again and I want to talk about how to set a tank up without putting a filter on it and I want to start by going over the nitrogen cycle real briefly if you're not familiar with what the nitrogen cycle is or how it works the nitrogen cycle is a nice little succinct way of talking about the ammonia that's being produced in your tank as a waste product being cycled chemically all the way down to the not so harmful or you can almost say harmless nitrate that we get out of the tank through this water change. So that's what I mean when I say nitrogen cycle. And the process is very simple. Ammonia is produced in the tank as a waste product, either from the fish themselves or from decaying vegetable material, old wood, uneaten plant food or um, fish food, broken down plant material, anything organic breaking down in the tank, and that includes the food your fish eat breaking down inside their body, the waste being produced is going to include ammonia. So you got to get the ammonia out of your tank and there is a species of bacteria we call nitrifying bacteria or beneficial bacteria and that is because it for all intents and purposes eats the ammonia and it produces a waste product called nitrite and then of course there's another species of bacteria that lives in the tank that eats the nitrite and then its waste product is nitrate so it's a very simple process ammonia gets produced bacteria eats the ammonia poops out nitrite another species of um, uh, bacteria eats the nitrite and poops out nitrate and there's your nitrogen cycle in a nutshell so what does our filter have to do with the nitrogen cycle honestly the main thing our filters have to do with the nitrogen cycle is water circulation the way the bacteria live in your tank is not in the water column itself it's on the surface area and it can't move to go get food it has to have ammonia rich and nitrogen rich water brought to it so when we put a filter on our tank it's basically a water pump that moves the, f the water around the tank and since we've got a big water pump in a canister or hanging on the back or whatever, we may as well provide it with a nice dark space that we can put a sponge or we can put some bio material. And since it's there, it's a nice handy place to provide habitat, basically, for your nitrifying bacteria. But that's not the only place that nitrifying bacteria can live. It lives on surface area. So all of these rocks, all of the gravel and the substrate in the bottom, there's nitrifying bacteria all through this tank. I don't need to have nitrifying bacteria specifically in my filter. So as long as the water is flowing around the tank and moving, that's basically doing the same thing as the filter. The mechanical aspect of the filter, you know, the, the filter floss or your filter pads or whatever, that does not actually remove anything from your tank. I know it seems like it does, but it's really just sweeping it under the carpet. It's removing it from your sight. If you think about it, the water is flowing, you know, think about a hang on the back filter with that dirty, scummy pad in there, and the water is flowing right through that pad, right back into the tank. It's not, you know, it hasn't been removed from your tank. It's just collecting on that pad so that when you want to remove it, it's nice and easy. If that pad wasn't there collecting it, it would still be in your tank. It would just settle down into the gravel and you'd have to either let it break down completely or gravel vac it out or whatever. But that pad, that filter pad, isn't removing anything from your tank. It's just a nice handy way to collect stuff up. Again, if we're going to run a pump and we're going to run stuff through it, we may as well use it for that purpose. But primarily what we're doing is we're pumping water around the tank and that, of course, provides us with our gas exchange and everything we need for a good healthy tank but it's also making sure the water circulates around so it moves over the surface area that contains your nitrifying bacteria so we're going to do a little experiment here 
I have recently set up a new tank to let her eyes adjust to this one for a minute. And I thought about how to set this one up filtration wise. So here's what we're going to do. I do want the convenience of being able to simply pull the filter pads out and not have to worry about, you know, gravel vacuuming and everything else. But I have removed both of my bio sponges. This is a completely brand new tank, totally uncycled. You can see the shiny brand new out of the box bio sponges. Not going to use these. All I have in there, if you're wondering how this is going to be filtered, if I can get it out of here, is the little clip thing that comes, the little frame that comes with the Tetra Whisper filters. And then I just take a piece of batting and wrap it around there. It has a little clip. You fold these over and then clip it on. And that's it. This is exactly what you see there and there is that that's the extent of the filtration we're going to have. And that's just for my convenience, just to get some of the dirt and scum out of the tank. So effectively, what we have here is a water feature. You can think of that not as a water filter, but think of it as a water pump. And think of it as a pump for creating a little bit of a waterfall in the tank. And that's it. I'm going to allow the nitrifying bacteria to inhabit the tank and grow and develop in the tank. So with no biofiltration at all, this tank is going to cycle in just fine. It's going to function just fine. It's going to be beautiful. We're going to see nice crystal clear water in it. And if you don't believe me, make sure you're subscribed and follow along and you won't miss any of the updates on that or anything else. So this should be interesting um, demonstration to show you. I'm trying to stay out of the light so I don't glare out on the camera here. But you can see there is nothing in there except those two little filter pads. And honestly, I don't even need them. Again, it's just going to be to allow me to simply pull these out and change the filters very simply. But effectively, I could just do that and have it as a pump making a waterfall for me. So here is the top of the tank. And this is a little tray sitting on top of the top of the filter. So I don't even pick the tray up. I actually pick the whole entire filter top up and put it back on. So I'm going to go ahead and put you on pause for one moment. We'll get the tank straightened back out and we'll have one final look at it. And then we'll be able to start watching this tank develop and cycle in with no biofiltration. So hang on half a second. All right, there you go. So someone suggested that I remove the front uh, bracket on the top there, that black bar. I didn't even know you could do that on these kind of tanks. I thought that kind of structurally was there to sort of hold these um, poorly constructed tanks together. So I'm not going to do that. And I did remove the other... Um, I had a sweet potato vine back on that corner that I was going to allow to grow across this front here and trail across there but I knocked it down twice already I still haven't even cleaned up the dirt off the floor so as I said uh, as things got on my nerves and became untenable we were going to go ahead and you know do away with some of them so this creeping jenny here is now what we're going to trail across the front and honestly this creeping jenny in here might even grow up and over at some point but that's going to be the tank it's going to have living plants in it and it's going to have tons and tons of surface area. I definitely need to get back there and remove that bright orange tag on the plug because that's really distracting. But that's all that is if you're wondering what that bright orange thing back there is. So there you go. Lots of surface area. Well oxygenated water and lots of circulation. I would not try to do this in a tank that was a bare glass bottom tank with nothing in it. No decor, no gravel, no nothing like that. And I certainly wouldn't do it in a tank that had a minimal amount of water flow. But this tank has a maximal amount of water flow. And it's got gobs of surface area that are nice and dark. Another good key aspect of the way the bacteria likes to live in a dark, oxygen-rich environment. So the vigorous water flow, tons of surface area, plenty of gas exchange, 
we've got all the ingredients we need to have a filterless tank. So again, don't think of that hang on the back filter as a filter so much as think of it as a water pump or a waterfall in my water feature here and consider this a little square pond in my basement, if you will. So thanks for watching and make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss any of the updates I got coming up on this tank or anything else. I got to get back to my native tank because my water change is almost done. And then don't forget, of course, this one here is my garden tank. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you real soon in the next one.